Did you know that the United States is a direct democracy? Apparently, everything is the voters' fault in America. Yeah, it's just so f***ing stupid. Mom, please turn away here from here. You're an image bearer of God. You're beautifully and wonderfully made. Is that enough? Dude, these people need to be institutionalized straight up. Bring back, bring back uh, asylums, which are horrible, and I completely understand it, exclusively for people who stand outside of abortion clinics. If you stand outside of an abortion clinic and fucking scream at like the teenagers that are looking to get an abortion uh, quietly, you need to be uh, you need to be institutionalized. You are literally just a freak. There is no way to save you. There is no way to salvage you. I know I'm in favor of rehabilitation. I talk about it all the time. But holy fuck, dude, if you're doing that. You know, if you're doing that, you straight up have to be institutionalized. It is the most psychotic thing you can do. You know how they take fake bus stops at retirement homes so the elderly don't run away? We need fake Planned Parenthoods at the institutions. Yeah, straight up. Build a fucking Planned Parenthood. These guys can, like, stand outside of it. You know, more jobs. More jobs for them. On the grounds of the fucking asylum, there should be, like, a fake Planned Parenthood they can go, and then you can, like, bring in some of the nurses... And, like, act like the nurses are looking for abortions or whatever so they can fucking scream at them. Keep them fucking busy. The other thing is, like, half the time, those people aren't even going in there for abortions. They're going in there for because Planned Parenthoods also offer a, w a wide range of free or incredibly affordable reproductive health care services. Like, they could be going in there to get fucking contraceptives and shit. Have you had enough? Is that enough of feeling really self-righteous this morning? I don't think that most people have a realistic picture of what happens outside of abortion clinics. Mom, you'll never forget the loss of your hey, child. Joe, come on. Baby. It's so funny because like everyone also is like strapped up with body cams too now. Like this motherfucker has a body camera on, dude. You know, you know, homie is a libertarian. This is real sovereign citizen hours, okay? Straight up. Nobody that has a fucking body camera like that is a normal person. Like, even the other lady has a strapped-on camera that she's, like, uh, broadcasting directly to TikTok on. This homie you know has that kind of fucking camera specifically so we could do, like, cop watch and, like, be sovereign citizen and be like, oh, uh, technically, the God-given uh, Admiralty Maritime Court has afforded me the right to uh, stand here and protest and harass minors uh, that are trying to get contraceptives. And uh, you cannot tell me to move away. That's actually uh, the, the 1748 uh, decision from uh, Colonial Williamsburg that dictates that I can actually stand outside of this facility and harass women, specifically minors. I am allowed to do that. It is my God-given, constitution-protected right. It's a boy or a girl. Joe! There's no reason to yell at anyone. <laughs> Someone said old cell. Yeah, this is an old no. cell. Sometimes I just stop for a minute and I'm like, what is this? I think abortion is so terribly wrong. I have a reason. Like, there's no saving this motherfucker, dude. He's like retired. Probably has like a nice little pension. All he, he definitely has a house that he paid off many, many years ago. That shit's like accruing value as he sits there. And this fucking dickhead is out there. Just, you know, harassing women, dude. That's what he's doing. Responsibility to be here. Whatever happens on the sidewalk, really our focus is the women and the children and their right to choose life. Absolutely not, please. No, nobody asked you. Most clinic escorts do their job silently. That's the tradition of escorting, but I just couldn't anymore. Almost every week for the past three years. Thank you. Shelly Mann makes a drive to this abortion clinic in Bellevue, Nebraska. Good morning. Her job? To protect the clinic's patients from the anti-abortion protesters. Bro, they come in every morning and sit there, dude. Like, that is so crazy. They get in there every morning, early as fuck, at sunrise, at the crack of dawn. You do this if you have nothing going on. You do this if your fucking relatives are no longer picking up your phone calls. You're so fucking bored and you get a sh sense of shared perspective, a sense of community from, like, engaging in this kind of psychotic behavior, right? What, what, what's the argument? Like, you want other people to be, like, living in hell just like you are every fucking day? Your life is hell. You don't do that if your life is normal, okay? 
And for people who are saying, oh, just like Twitch uh, chatters, motherfucker, at least Twitch chatters are entertaining themselves, okay? Half the time, they can't go outside for a litany of different health complications or whatever the fuck. At least they're sitting here entertaining themselves. These freaks are going out and, like, actually trying to bring people down. They are the IRL gray names, dude. Twitch chatters 98% of the time are just normal. They're not, like, fucking trying to hurt someone else's, uh, uh, you know, trying to ruin someone else's fucking day who line its perimeter. Before the shift starts and before the other escorts get here, I usually just take like a little walk and look uh, for things that might be suspicious because if there's something here that looks like a bomb, even if it's not a bomb, it has to be investigated. So we'll have to cancel patients for the day. Let's do two in the top and two people walk in and then I'll float. There are protesters on either side of the driveway. So the patient is trying to turn in past the protesters. So the first thing that we're trying to do is get them to just pull in the driveway. So this gives you kind of an idea of where you are and aren't All allowed right. to stand. Yes. I'm Shelly, I'm from the clinic. I'm gonna walk you in, okay? We helped the patients get out of the car and just make the walk. We'll get in here. You'll go to the top of the stairs. As a yeah, pro-life bombs people. I mean, dude, dude, the state is protecting pro-lifers by literally fucking, uh, uh, you know, quelling protests that are happening all around the country with a chemical agent that causes abortions, tear gas. The idea that, like, any of this makes sense, if you're looking for sense, don't look to American politics. There is no consistency in any of this. These motherfuckers are like, oh, I'm pro-life, except they have no life. You can't be pro-life and then have no life. It sucks. This is what you're doing with your life? That sucks. The door to the right. That walk is the loneliest walk if you are by yourself. I've been in this movement since 73. I think these unborn children are, are being violated and having their lives taken away from them. Dan is a clinic protester. Like this guy, look at him. He modded his fucking car. I'm nine weeks old and I sucked my thumb today. Please, mom, choose life, not my death. First of all, nine weeks old, dude, get fucking owned, okay? That's like literally the size of a goddamn, uh, you know, jelly bean, okay? Get fucking, get owned. Get absolutely owned. Why? Why is it? Also, the other part of this is like, this is mental illness. This is untreated, undiagnosed mental illness. Why the fuck? Are we, instead of going, hey, maybe if we're not even going to medicalize this, if we're not going to give people this help, the least we could do is just not listen to them. America is, is now a country where enough of the people that sit on top of fucking stand on top of soapbox outside of the fucking subway station, outside of like, you know, Union Square Park or whatever the fuck, uh, that, that scream at you. If, if enough of them get together, they can lead policy now. It's sick. Whoever is the loudest person who is the most insane, loudest person, we will listen to them and we will actually make policy around it. That's great. He says only recently, since he retired, has he found the time to come out to protest. Thank more. God. Thank God. When I meet my maker, I hope the good Lord has a lot of mercy because... Uh... Dog, you are literally going to hell. Straight up. I really... Bro, I swear to God, listen. I'm not exactly a believer myself. But I sometimes do wish there is a fucking heaven and hell because every single one of these freaks is going to be burning for all the punishment, uh, 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 awfulness that they put so many people around them through. You're dying. You're going to hell permanently, dude. You are a demon here. You are making everyone's life a living hell currently as we're alive. What makes you think if there is a hell, you're not going to it, motherfucker. You're straight up going to it. No chill. I have... I carry a lot of guilt that I haven't been here enough. Whatever help you need, we have to shield the life of a son or a daughter. A beautiful gift of life. A beautiful we are always keeping them in our prayers as we're out here, and that's what you've seen a lot of. So, yes, we call out, we offer help. We'll help you. We're here to help you. We're praying for you right now. What's up, guys? They are in full force today. Shelly began to broadcast her confrontations and interactions with protesters on TikTok. You want to mind your own business, please? No, it's not a Tootsie Roll. It's actually a tiny rubber fetus. Being kind of funny and adding an element of humor certainly makes everybody lighten a little bit up. Hey guys, so uh, today I'm going to take a little break from escorting 
and uh, I'm gonna be a groundskeeper. We gotta clean up the leaves and trash. And it gives patients a chance to kind of take a step back and realize like that person who's screaming at them, they don't know their heart. They don't know their story, but I also don't want to be a meme. Like it's really important to me that people understand that like this is literally like life risking work. United States abortion clinics have a long history of being targets for violence. Deadly violence at an abortion clinic in Pensacola, Florida. This time, two men, a doctor and a clinic escort, were killed, and a woman who was a retired nurse was injured in a hail of gunfire. Like, look at this, yo, pro-life, bro. Hey, hey, nothing says pro-life like fucking uh, taking an M16 out and just fucking killing doctors, dude. Nothing says pro-life like murdering motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Straight up, bro. That's how pro-life I am, dude. Imagine being yelled at through the window of your doctor's office. Imagine being shot through the window of your fucking doctor's office because some fucking psychotic freak thought that this is the way that, to do pro-life shit. Since 1977. But of course, the inherent irony there exists within the attitude. If you're pro-life, you have to factor in the life of the mother. And none of these motherfuckers do that. They don't care. If they were pro-life, at a certain point, they would sit down and be like, um, well, the carrier is a person, a fully established, fully developed person. Why the fuck are we forcing them to carry a pregnancy to term, which is torturous and violent, especially if the state is forcing them to? Clearly, the inherent contradiction exists at the fucking fundamental level. It is oxymoronic. You're not pro-life, you're just pro-birth. You're pro-forcibly making women carry pregnancies to term. That's it. Seven, at least 11 people have been killed in anti-abortion They're just pro-control. This clinic is led by Dr. Leroy Carhart, one of the few doctors left in the country who performs a third trimester abortions. And this is a little pre-op from here. I'm 80, I don't need to do abortions anymore. I'm looking for doctors to replace me right now or to help me, uh, but the biggest problem is finding somebody that's willing to take the target off my back and put it on theirs. Dr. Carhart's best friend and mentor, Dr. George Tiller, was murdered by an anti-abortion extremist in 2009. With the senseless murder of Dr. George Tiller, we have lost a champion of women's rights, a talented, caring physician, and one of my family's best friends. <coughs> In September 2020, Shelley was involved in an altercation with an anti-abortion protester who was found guilty of assault by mutual consent. The protester was sentenced to a $50 fine and unmonitored probation for 12 months. It has been really hard. I get tons of messages from people really graphic and upsetting and violent descriptions of my death. The Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. We will aid and abet abortion. They have eliminated- By the way, if you want to know, like, you know how we sometimes talk about fucking, uh, you know how we sometimes talk about like Ben Shapiro and the role that Ben Shapiro played in, uh, in, in the Quebec mosque shooting? And Ben, of course, says like, no, I didn't do that. That's not like that has nothing to do with me, whatever. Well, there was a time and place when before Ben Shapiro, when uh, the abortion provider uh, uh, Tiller, Dr. Tiller was murdered in 2009. There was another man who was also responsible for, uh, because of his endless crusade against him. Bill motherfucking O'Reilly. He literally straight up unloaded into this dude. Rotor had been waiting patiently that morning in the pews of Tiller's church. Right after Tiller finished his job as an usher, Rotor walked into the church foyer, uh, foyer and pressed a gun against Tiller's forehead and shot him. He died from the single gunshot wound. Rotor killed a doctor for one reason and one reason only. He was a prominent abortion provider, maybe even the most prominent in the country at the time, and Rotor wanted to stop abortion. He's, Bill O'Reilly called him Tiller the baby killer. No one questions that Rotor's radical anti-abortion views were responsible for Tiller's death, but this... The day Bill O'Reilly was ousted from Fox News is a good time to remember O'Reilly's role in the Tiller tragedy, especially in the context of new release statistics showing the harassment of abortion providers in various forms is on the increase. 
O'Reilly, between 2005 and 2009, talked about Tiller on 29 episodes of his show. He repeatedly referred to him as Tiller the Baby Killer and hurled all sorts of other epithets in Tiller's direction. He equated him with Nazis, Al-Qaeda, Nambla, said he was operating a death mill, claimed he was executing babies about to be born, and equated his profession with the actions of Mao, Hitler, and Stalin. In perhaps the most direct attack on Tiller, O'Reilly came close to saying that he personally would be violent towards Tiller if he could get away with it. And if I get my hands on Tiller, well, you know, can't be vigilantes, can't do that. It's just a figure of speech, but despicable. Oh, my God. Oh, it doesn't get worse. Does it get worse? No. Think about that. Information over to the authorities. Can you imagine? Because there's nothing going to happen to the, the, you know, girl. She's going to be interviewed, and if she's living in a home with a father or right. an uncle who would do that, you're going to keep her in that home? Well, the woman said most of the times these are repeat offenders. Well, okay, yeah. even more of a reason. But that's okay to... with her because it's all theory. It's all theory with her. You see? It doesn't matter. And I'll tell you what, even if you walked her through it, if you, saw, if you, if you made her stay in the room while Tiller took the baby out and drilled a hole in its head, she wouldn't change. Wouldn't change. Would retreat back into the world. What is it? In Denver, they have an escort who talks a lot to try to distract you from the screaming, and there's armed security behind bulletproof gra glass when you walk in. I was confident in my choice, but it still had me crying and overwhelmed. Not easy sharing my story randomly to 38,000 people. I hope you're able to read it. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, it, it's easy to forget that these are like real human beings that are making this medical decision. And it is fucking psychotic that like the medical decision itself is already a difficult one to make. Right. You're very brave for being able to do that. And then on top of that, like these guys are trying to harass you and stop you and do everything you can. America. Not everybody is like that. Most people believe the way I believe. I know that all the polls show that. Not true. None of the polls show that. He's a straight line, straight fucking line to his audience. Weasley little lying. But the powers that be, the courts, the, the media, oh, the media. I can't tell you how despicable I think the Kansas City Star and the Wichita Eagle. Those are the two main ones. I can't tell you. Let me just read you one thing before we take a break. I'm going to take your phone calls. This is from the Associated Press. Um... This is associated. No, this is Kansas City Star. Kansas City Star. Quote, O'Reilly said on a program that a source told his show that abortion providers were performing late term abortions because the women were depressed. A mental health risk he deemed insufficient. He deemed insufficient. This is David Klepper. Kansas City Star. You see, O'Reilly deemed it. Who's O'Reilly? He deemed. Oh. Okay. So I'm, I'm the fascist. I'm the bad guy. I'm the problem. Not Tiller. No, he, we, no, 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 no. He's a good guy. Now, Tiller's pumping all kinds of money into, uh, obviously, the uh, attorney general race. He wants the guy that's going to let him off the hook to win. Those of you listening in Kansas, you ought to know that. You know, I, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. You guys know these guys better than I do. But I'll tell you what, anything Tiller wants, I'm voting the other way. <laughs> and if I could get my hands on Tiller, well, uh, you know, can't be vigilantes. Can't do that. Uh, it's just a figure of speech. But despicable? Oh, my God. Uh, it doesn't get worse. Does it get worse? No. Back with you, closing comments. I, I feel like the can't be vigilantes is the... The can't be vigilantes, I feel like, is literally the fucking, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the, the, in a video game. Oh, it's just a figure of speech. It's like the old school in a video game version of that. Like, he knew, he knew what he was telegraphing to his fucking audience. You know what I'm saying? 100% knew exactly what the fuck was up, exactly what the fuck was gonna happen. He did the constitutional right to an abortion. Now we're going to get into the pro-choice rally after it's this. It's been shown in every country in the world. It doesn't change whether it's legal or not legal. It happens. And women will start dying, which is horrible. Or they'll be maimed for life, not being able to have children in the future. I just pray that, um, that it wakes people up.
At the end of the day, we're a network of people who care very much about making sure that people have access to reproductive health care, and I don't plan to stop doing that even if Roe is overturned.